Amen. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. If you have your Bible with you, let's turn to uh, the book of Romans, chapter 12, verses 3 through 8. Romans 12, 3 through 8. And I'll be reading from the uh, New King James Version. Romans 12, 3 through 8. For I say through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function, so we, being many, are one body in Christ, and individually members of one another, having then gifts, Differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. Or ministry, let us use it to in our ministering. Uh, he who he who teaches in teaching, he who exhorts in exhortation, he who gives with liberality, he who leads with diligence, he who so, who shows mercy with cheerfulness. Now we finished our, our doctrines of faith series last week with the doctrine of stewardship, which is managing, if you remember, which is managing the things that God has, has given us to manage. There were four principles of stewardship. One was the principle of God's ownership of everything and everyone. God owns everything and everyone. The second principle was the principle of our responsibility to the owner, our responsibility to God who owns everything. The third principle was or is our accountability to God who is the owner of everything. We're responsible and we're accountable for all that God has given to us and he owns everything. Uh, and uh, number four. He owns everything, he owns, which means he owns our talents, our finances, our environment, everything. The last principle that we looked at last year was last week was the principle of reward. If we are responsible and we are accountable and we take care of what manage what God has given us, there are rewards for that management. There are rewards for that management. And remember the last thing I said was that we can express our stewardship by giving ourselves away in the name and for the glory of Christ. We can express our stewardship by giving ourselves away. Which brings me to the actual text for today. The text for today is 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10. That is, each one, each of you should use whatever gift you receive to serve others as, faith, as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. So Peter, in his, he's writing to Christians. Peter, in his letters to these Christians, is saying that every Christian, all of us are here are believers, or that are here are believers, every Christian has received a gift, and you should use it. Like, these gifts are different from person to person. You know, they're as varied as uh, the ability to sing or to preach or to communicate the gospel to children. Uh, or to be a peacemaker, or to be able to say the right word at the right time, to even to make money and use it for God's glory. We go on and on and on. There are a number of gifts, and they're different for each believer. But every believer, every single one of you, has at least one gift, one spiritual gift given by the Holy Spirit. Now, I'm going to give you a list of gifts today. And next week, I'm going to go into some detail about each gift. Can't do all of this in one week. I'm going to give you a list later on, 
And then next week, we'll be going into detail about uh, each gift. But I want to talk about some things today. God has given each Christian, every one of us, certain supernatural abilities for his glory. Now, these spiritual gifts are supernatural, and they're given for God's glory. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 7 and 8. Say this, Ephesians 4, verses 7 and 8. But to each of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. This is why it says, when he ascended on high, he took many captives and gave gifts to his people. So he gave gifts to everyone. And the gifts of grace, meaning there's something we did not earn, we did not study for them, we did not buy them. They are a gift by grace. Now this sermon today and the one next week really just scratches the surface but I hope it's enough to, for you to realize that each one of you, each one of you who is saved and is a believer has at least one spiritual gift. And the gift was given to you for you to use in the body of Christ so that the church, the body of Christ will benefit. It doesn't mean just Christ's church so will benefit, but it means the body of Christ will benefit from your spiritual gift. Now we have different gifts and the combination of those gifts when used will benefit and build up the church, build up the body of Christ. I'll say again, this gift is a grace gift. As a matter of fact, the word gift comes from the Greek word uh, charisma, from where we get charismatic. And that simply means that it is freely given. It's a gift of grace. It's freely given. And these gifts are given by the grace of God, so again, they were not earned by study or practice or genetics, but by God's grace. They're supernatural acknowledgments and endowments given by God. And they're different. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verses 4 through 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 4 through 7. There are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. This gift that you have, and you all have one, it's given for everybody's profit in the body of Christ. Now, these are supernatural graces which individual Christians need to fulfill for the mission of the church. Now, the gifts are related to both seemingly natural abilities and seemingly miraculous abilities. But all of them are gifts, spiritual, all the spiritual gifts are empowered by the Holy Spirit. The gifts are different, but they have some common elements. There's some common elements of the spiritual gifts. They're all different, but there's some common elements. One, each is a manifestation of the Holy Spirit's presence in your life. The spiritual gift is a manifestation of the Holy Spirit's presence in you. Each gift is for the common good. It's intended to build up the body of Christ. And each gift is given as the Holy Spirit determines. We may want a certain gift, but if the Holy Spirit had not determined that, you don't get that gift. The Holy Spirit determines what gift to give to each individual person. 1 Corinthians 12, 11. 1 Corinthians 1st chapter 12, verse 11 says, But one and the same Spirit works all these things of all the gifts, all distributing each one individually as he wills. It's the Holy Spirit's option to give whatever gift he wants to give to whoever he wants to give. 
Now there's no true, I want to keep emphasizing this, there's no Christian in whom the Holy Spirit has not given a divine capacity enabling him or her to make a, a significant contribution to other believers. So you have a gift that's important for me. I have a gift that's important for you. And if those gifts operate in love, the church will accomplish what God intends for it, and that's to show the world his plan of salvation for everybody, regardless of who they are. Now, we're all familiar with the fruit of the Spirit. We've talked about that a number of times. Uh, it's in Galatians 5, uh, verses 15 through 26. Now, I'll read that real quickly. Now, the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, reveries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the, inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, against such there's no law. So those are the spiritual, that's the fruit of the Spirit. The gifts of the Spirit are different. Spiritual gifts are used for the benefit of others. Your spiritual gift is, is used for my benefit, while the fruit of the Spirit results in personal sanctification. The fruit of the Spirit is, is for personal sanctification. The gift of the Spirit is for you to use to help me in my develop my relationship with Jesus Christ. Now the fruit of the Spirit is the same for all believers. The fruit of the Spirit is the same for all believers because the Holy Spirit wants to develop in each one of us the character that's like Christ. When that character is developed, it'll include the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. When the, as, as, as the fruit of the Spirit is developed, it'll include all those things. The gifts of the Spirit are almost always different between believers. The fruit of the Spirit is the same. The gifts of the Spirit are almost always different. Because the Holy Spirit equips each Christian with a unique set of gifts and talents. There may be similarities in the gifts and the talents that, that each, of the, each of us have, but God never made an exact copy or replica of a person. The gifts are almost always different between believers. The fruit of the Spirit is the goal. The fruit of the Spirit is the goal so that we become more like Christ. As Romans 8.29 says, For whom he foreknew, Romans 8.29, For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among brothers. So the fruit of the Spirit is the goal. The fruit of the Spirit is the goal. The gifts of the Spirit are the way of achieving the goal. The gifts of the Spirit are given to help us and others toward the goal of a Christ-like character. The fruit of the Spirit is about who we are becoming. Remember, the fruit, remember what they are? What the fruit of the Spirit is? Well, the fruit of the Spirit is, is about what we're becoming as we become, become or we are being sanctified more and more and more. The gifts of the Spirit are about how we serve God in this life. The gifts of the Spirit are how, about how we serve God in this life. As I said before, a spiritual gift is a divine endowment of a special ability for service. It is supernatural. A spiritual gift is an attribute given by the Holy Spirit to every single Christian according to to God's grace for use within the context of the body. The 
gifts of the Spirit are so that we can help each other. So, another question. What's the difference between a talent and a spiritual gift? Well, there are some similarities between talents and spiritual gifts. Both are from God. Both grow in effectiveness with use. Both are intended to be used on behalf of others and not for selfish purposes. Just as I read uh, in, in 1 Corinthians 12, 7, but the manifestation of the Spirit is to give unto each one for the profit of all. So the spiritual gifts and talents are to be used to benefit others, but there's some difference between a spiritual gift and a talent. Because we should use our gifts and talents to obey the two commandments that Jesus said were the two greatest commandments. This is why we should use our gifts and our talents. If Jesus said, the greatest commandment was, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And the second is like it, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Okay? But to whom and when talents and spiritual gifts are given difference, any person regardless of his belief in God or Christ, is given a natural talent as a result of a combination of genetics and surroundings. You know, some have a natural ability in music, some in art or mathematics, uh, and you can develop those by being around your family, uh, the musical family, that can aid you in developing a talent for music. Now, God even gives talents, talents to endow certain individuals to do certain things. There's a story in the Old Testament, I won't read it, but there's a story in the Old Testament when God was giving Moses instructions to build the tabernacle that he gave, said he gave special talents to a guy named Bezalel. That's in Exodus 31, verses 1 through 6. He gave Bezalel special talents to, for engraving and doing certain things for the tabernacle. Talents to do a specific thing for a specific time. So God sometimes gives those. The spiritual gifts, however, are given to believers, only believers. All believers uh, receive a gift from the Holy Spirit. Okay, comes from the Holy Spirit, and those gifts are given when a person receives salvation. Your spiritual gift is given to you when you receive salvation. Because the Bible clearly teaches that spiritual gifts, and I've read some of those, are the work of the Holy Spirit, okay? And a person doesn't receive the Holy Spirit until salvation. Holy Spirit, you receive the Holy Spirit at salvation, and at that time, you, this Holy Spirit gives you a spiritual gift. Now, it may need to be developed, but you, that's when you receive your spiritual gift, at that moment. The Holy Spirit gives you the gift that he wants you to have. A talent is a result of, of, of genetics, and our training, a spiritual gift is a result of the power of the Holy Spirit. A talent can be possessed by anybody, Christian or not. Spiritual gifts are only possessed by Christians. Both talents and spiritual gifts should be used for God's glory and to minister to others. Spiritual gifts are focused on those tasks, the tasks that God has given you. And talents can be used entirely for non-spiritual purposes. Spiritual gifts should be used only for spiritual purposes. And focused on those, talents can be used entirely for non-spiritual purposes. Now, uh, and we'll finish this up next week, but what are these spiritual gifts that I've been talking about? What are they? We can find them in three places of Scripture. Romans chapter 12, verses 3 through 8. I'm going to read that. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 through 12. 
and Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 through 15. I'm going to read those, and then I'm going to give you a list. All right? You may not be able to write them all down today. I'm going to give you a list, but next week I'm going to give you a handout that lists all the spiritual gifts and describes them and also give you a little exercise so that if you don't know your spiritual gift, you will be able to perhaps determine what it is. I'll give that to you next week. But now let's, let's, look, at, let's look at what they are. Uh, Romans chapter 12, verses 3 through 8. Romans 12, 3 through 8. For I say through the grace given to me to everyone who is among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think so really as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function, so we, being many, are one body in Christ and individually members of another. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. In prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. Or ministry, let us use it in our ministering. Uh, he who teaches in teaching, he who exhorts in exhortation, he who gives with liberality, he who leads with diligence, who he leads with diligence, he who sh so shows mercy with cheerfulness. That's, that's the Romans section. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 through 12, we'll read that. 1 Corinthians 12, 1 through 12. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles carried away uh, to those dumb idols, however you, however you were led. Therefore, I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus a curse, and no one can say that Jesus is Lord except the Holy, by the Holy Spirit. There are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it's the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healings by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another uh, different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues, but one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. For as the body is one and has many members, but all the members uh, of that, but all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. So that, that's in Romans and 1 Corinthians. Yeah, I'm going to give you a list, but maybe as you've gone through, you've kind of seen what they are. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 through 15. Ephesians 4, 11 through 15. And he gave himself some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of faith, and the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children, tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men, and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things unto him who is the head. Now we, we went through all of those scriptures, okay, uh, and what what the po important point is that they're all given by the Holy Spirit, they're all supernatural abilities, and they all are to be used for building up the body of Christ, right? So it says, so, so that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about by every wind of doctrine. That's, that's the purpose for all of these gifts that are in the body of Christ. So here's a list, so here's a list, here's a list, and we're going to talk about them next week. All right, you may not get them all because there are a lot of them. Okay, exhortation or encouragement. Exhortation, giving, leadership, 
mercy, prophecy, service, teaching, administration, apostleship, discernment, faith, and then we're talking about a supernatural faith. Now we all have faith, but we're talking about a supernatural faith. We'll talk about that next week. Healings, helps or serving, service, knowledge, miracles, tongues, interpretation of tongues, wisdom, evangelism, and pastoral shepherding. Okay? That's a list of the gifts. Remember, every Christian has one or more of these gifts. Some, some believers have received more than one. Again, it's the Holy Spirit's decision. Some, some have one only. Some have more than one. Remember, they're given at salvation. But they may be left to be, uh, they may lie undiscovered and dormant for a long time. And I don't want that to happen to us. That's why I'm going to give you this handout next week. Now, use, you, you've heard people say that if you don't use your gift, you'll lose it. Well, I'm not sure about that because if, if the Holy Spirit gives them to you at salvation, I don't think you can lose the gift. You may not. Exercise or use it, but I don't believe you can lose it. Spiritual gifts can be abused and neglected, but they cannot be lost. Remember, spiritual gifts are not the same as the fruit of the Spirit. They're not the same as natural talents. But remember this. All Christians, every one of us, a call to a ministry of some kind. And your gift enables you to perform that ministry. And your gifts ought to be used for the body of Christ. They are not for self-promotion, They're not, but for the profit of the body of Christ. One guy said, the possessor of the gift is only the instrument not the receiver of God's glory. The possessor of the gift is the instrument, okay, and not the receiver of God's glory. God gets the glory with the instrument that he uses. He uses the gift to glorify God. So next week, we're going to talk about each one of the spiritual gifts, and we're going to give you a guide to help you identify your gift if you don't already know what it is. One point I want to make is that it is not too late to start using your gift. And from a selfish perspective, I want you to use your gift because if you're not using your gift, I'm missing something. If you're not using your gift in the body of Christ, if you're not using your gift in Christ's church, then we're missing something that you, only you, uniquely have because God gave you that gift. So we're going to talk about that next week. And so anyone here, remember I said this, these, these are supernatural gifts, and they can help you even in your secular work. For example, a person with the gift of teaching, okay, can have that spiritual gift, that supernatural in the church, can be used in their vocation. Your spiritual gifts have some value outside the body of Christ, though they are designed for use in the body of Christ. So if anyone here today who's not uh, a believer, not a Christian, you may have some talents that are great, but you don't have any spiritual gifts. And today is the day to get them because, as I said before, they are given at the moment you are saved. So if anyone here today who has not accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, come now and do that. 
Come now and do it, and we'll all rejoice with you because it's a great time. If there's anyone here today who uh, is looking for a church home, this is a great one. Uh, to, uh, we, we study scripture, we preach scripture, we sing scripture. It's a great place to be, and we exhibit a lot of love. So this is a great place to be if you're looking for a church home. Okay, I love you. I'm looking forward to this next message because I want you all to know and to begin to use your spiritual gifts. Now, I think that I know the spiritual gifts of some of you already, but I want you to know what they are so we can start using them and the body of Christ will benefit. So God bless you. We'll see you next week.